I'm going to go off script for a second. Uh, I do that. Um, I was reading an article this morning, or maybe it was last night. Uh, there was a concert this week. And uh, at that concert, the crowd was rowdy enough that it registered as a 2.4 seismic event. If the world can get that excited about Taylor Swift to cause a swift quake, imagine the people of God praising him. The earth should shake every day as we keep the rocks from crying out. Uh, thank you, choir. Now, back to our regularly scheduled program. Uh, we're on Romans 12 again. Uh, I'm trying to keep it easy for you. It's got nothing about making it easy. For, well, it is a little bit about making it easier for me, but um, it's a fantastic chapter. Uh, I'll just remind you where we've been before we move forward. Uh, this is, of course, Paul writing to a mixed church, Jews and Gentiles, Jews who've grown up with the Word of God, have grown up with the law, and all that goes with that. They've heard, they've heard, they've heard. And then Gentiles, who are the Johnny Come Latelys and have just come on the scene and have come to faith in Christ and have no idea what all of this is about. Uh, and Paul through the Spirit, inspiration of the Spirit, to write to these people and say, here's how you get along, here's how we come together, here's how you live the Christian life. You have been saved by grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone, to the glory of God alone. Now what? And so we've come to chapter 12, and he's... Uh, talking about this, the, the body being a living sacrifice and us uh, seeking the will of God together. We talked last week about uh, using the gifts and the faith that God has given us in various ministries. It has been a wonderful encouragement to me to see people volunteering, jumping up, saying, what, what needs done? Uh, that is the church that I remember. That is the church that we are. And that is the church we need to be, right? And so here we are. So, okay, well, I'm willing to jump in here. I'm willing to, to, to live as this living sacrifice. I want, I want to know the will of God. I want to seek the will of God. I want to do the will of God. But what in the world is that supposed to look like? Uh, I, I fear that many times... Uh, we have preachers that stand before the people and, and we, we go, to the, we have lofty doctrine and theology and I'm a theology and doctrine guy. I make no apologies for that. Jesus was a doctrine guy. I make no apologies for trying to be like Jesus. Uh, Paul, a doctrine guy. Well, but doctrine divides. Yes, truth from falsehood. That's what we want. Well, theology's hard. How are you supposed to get stronger? Lift hard things, lift big things, lift heavy things. Think deeply about God. What if our ground-shaking worship was based on truth as much or more, preferably more, than just how we felt about a song? It would be biblical at that point. Oh, look out for that. And so here we are. Now what, Paul? We've got this. We've we got our gifts. We're ready to go. We've got our faith. We're all packed up, ready to go. What now? I'm glad you asked. Romans chapter 12. Let's start in verse 9, if you join me. Just a few verses this morning. Verse 9, Romans 12. Let love be genuine. 
Abhor what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with brotherly affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not be slothful in zeal. Be fervent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in tribulation. Be constant in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints and seek to show hospitality. The word of the Lord. Would you pray with me? Our Father, we thank you once again, as we always do, for preserving your word for us. Thank you for speaking. Lord, I pray that we would hear from you this day. And Lord, as we hear from you, we would respond in faith. We would respond in obedience. Lord, teach us to be faithful in the little things because, Lord, you bless us in great ways. Speak to us now as your children have gathered here on the Lord's day to hear from you. We ask it in Christ's name. Amen. Now, I was looking at that, you're probably going to oh, no. Look at all those phrases he's going to go into. We're going to be here all day. Maybe. Um, we'll, we'll have an intermission if we need to, but we won't need to. Um, as we read that, maybe you were thinking, well, some of this stuff is just basic, right? When we're starting off here, well, what do we do? How, do? how am I supposed to live this Christian life? If I'm a brand new convert, or even if I'm someone who's been around for a while, it's not a bad thing to hear, let love be genuine. Yours might say, let love be without hypocrisy. Don't fake it. The world fakes it just fine. Not so with God's children. If God is love, how can we not? Now, now, we also live in an age when such an abused word, love, right? Love this, love that, right? Uh, and, and we speak a language that only has one word for love, unfortunately, and so I end up using the same word for how I relate to my wife, my children, my dog, and pizza. I assure you that I relate to pizza far differently than my wife. If not, she would have told me. Love, right? The love of God, the love that, that God has shown us that we are to show to one another, to others. It's different. It's not, well, I sure love a cheeseburger. It doesn't. I'm not, I'm not giving of myself when I love a cheeseburger. The cheeseburger doesn't know that I have set my affections and my mouth on it, nor does it care. But people do know. Don't you know? When someone loves you, really loves you, you can tell. And the opposite's true too, isn't it? When they don't, we pick up on that pretty quickly too, don't we? We live in a culture that's to where, where being offended is the, the national pastime. It may, be, it may have gone international, like Olympic levels now, of being offended. What about being loved? What about showing love? Let your love be genuine, without hypocrisy. Well, how am I supposed to do that? Just, I mean, by doing these next few things that he lists. We'll do these things, and if you're, if you're careful to do it this way, then you'll know that you're not loving with hypocrisy. You don't have a big mask on that's got the big happy face on it. Yeah, I love you so much. While behind there, you're just gritting your teeth because I love you because Jesus makes me. Although that can be true too, can't it? There are people... You love them because Jesus makes you. Don't tell them that. But it's true. 
But if God can love the unlovely, the unlovable, then God through us can love them as well. So how does this work? Well, abhor what is evil. Yours might just say hate. Um, but since we, uh, when I was in about, I don't remember, seventh grade or so, that word abhor was on a vocabulary quiz. And so I remember that one. You know, we, we oh, hate. You know, we don't hate. No, don't hate, don't hate. Yes. Hate sin. Hate evil. Because those things are real. It is biblical. Psalm 97.10. Oh, you who love the Lord, hate evil. It's not just a matter of, well, I just, I don't, I don't love it. Right? We've learned that. Perhaps there are songs that we sing in church, and you're like, well, I don't love it. I'm going to sing it anyway. Because I love who it's about. Maybe there are foods that you eat at your house particularly if you're under the age of 18. There may be foods that you eat at your house and you don't love them, right? There are certain foods that we ate at our house when I was growing up that are banished from our house today. <laughs> I won't tell you what they are because then, I know how you are, you'll, it'll, it'll, be in, it'll be at the office waiting for me tomorrow morning. We made this for you, Kevin, you need to love us. But it's one thing to go, well, I don't love it. It's another thing to actively oppose. Hate evil. 1 Thessalonians 5. Test everything, hold fast to what is good, and abstain from every form of evil. Some of us memorize that as every appearance of evil. Every form of evil is a better translation. Adjust your memory as you see fit. Every form. Takes all kinds of forms, doesn't it? Some of it looks okay. But again, discernment between truth and error is not a giant chasm anymore. It's razor thin sometimes, isn't it? Something looks good, sounds okay. The more you think about it, ooh, I better not. Except a lot of us don't do the ooh, I better not part. Got to be careful. Test it. Hate what is evil. Cling. Hold fast to what is good. You know, like your babies do, mamas. When they don't want, they, they don't want to go, they don't want to go to bed. What do they do? They cling. Any other time, they're off running away doing whatever they want to do. But when it is time for a bath or bed, where are they? Right there. Clinging fingernails into your flesh, right? Don't let me go, don't make me go. Cling, hold fast to what is good. As much as you hate evil, if something is good, if something is of God, dig your nails in. Hold on for dear life. Now, some of you may go, well, of course. Come on, Kevin, this is basic Christian stuff. Right. That's why we have to be reminded, right? These things that, that we, oh, well, love others. Well, yeah, we, we've got that down. What, what's next? No, you don't. I don't. I don't have that love thing down. There are plenty of times I fall short on that. Plenty of times I don't cling like I ought to to the good stuff to the godly stuff. I don't hold fast. So I have to be reminded. Verse 10, as if that weren't enough, just to hate what's evil and hold fast to what's good. Well, what does that look like? Well, here's something good. Love one another with brotherly affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Oh boy. There's a word there for that kind of love. Because remember, everybody that's been in church more than four times knows there's different words for love in Greek. 
you got a guy with education, you know I have to use this. Otherwise, why pay off the loans? It's brotherly affection. This is the kind of love that you have for blood, right? Those people that live in your house, your brothers and your sisters, your mom and your dad, grandma, grandpa, as far out as it goes. Used to go further out because we used to know further out, didn't we? Right? We, we, we would know and we would see them all the time. My goodness, you might show up at grandma's house for Sunday lunch. Gosh, if we did that now, we'd have to meet her at the restaurant. Brotherly, familial, right? Don't you know that's why the devil's after the family? If that's the kind of love we're supposed to have with each other here in the church, what better strategy than to totally remove the frame of reference? Well, you're supposed to love each other like you would at home. I don't have anybody at home. I can't stand those people. It's almost as if it doesn't naturally happen. But I remember growing up, my sister and I would sometimes, rarely, on occasion, have a light disagreement. <laughs> as all children do. And as the older sibling, of course, I knew better, so it was usually my fault. My mother, in her godly wisdom, I don't know how many times this happened, I only remember it happening once. We had really been loud. She took us by either the neck or the shoulders with her nails clinging to what is good. And she turned us to face one another. And she asked us individually. She looked to my sister. Do you hate him? No. What are you going to say? And she looked at me. Kevin, do you hate your sister? No. Act like it. Brothers and sisters, is there someone in this room you hate? No. No. Let's act like it. Let's love each other. Let's look out for each other. Like family, like blood. Now, remember that even in families, it takes an act of will sometimes, doesn't it? There's plenty of people I'm related to that I gotta love them on purpose. Just like we tell our daughters anytime they leave, have a good day on purpose. Because if you don't do it on purpose, you won't. If you don't love on purpose, you won't love. Well, I'll just wait for it to happen and you know, I'll just, cause they'll do something, I'll go, oh, I love you for that. What if they don't? Love them anyway. Well, what if they don't like it? Well, I love them anyway. Sometimes it's, it, 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 you can almost, I'm not gonna go there. This is, this is that, that affection, right? Like the affection Paul has for the church. Philippians 1.8, for God is my witness how I long for you with all the affections of Christ Jesus. That affection. This is Paul using uh, figure of speech. You know how when you love somebody, you love them with all your heart? The Hebrews didn't do that. The Hebrews love you with your guts. Your intestine, literally your intestine. I love you with all my intestines. Can you imagine how Valentine's Day cards would be different? <laughs> You've got a lot of guts, Valentine. But we kind of borrowed some of it, right? He's got a lot of guts. Oh, that's a lot of guts. I got a feeling in my gut. I feel it in my gut. I still feel there. 
<clears throat> right? But no, I well, I love him with all of my heart. Well, sure, your heart works all the time. It's constantly going. Your gut has to go on purpose, doesn't it? Again, intentional, focused, it's real easy to go, I love people, until you get individuals in front of you, right? I love people as a group. We're great as a species. No, we're not. I'm much better individuals. I'm much better with individuals than as a species. As a species, I mean, come on, go to Walmart. You'll see how fallen we are. Go to the grocery store. You see how fallen we are. I still don't like how some of y'all acted about toilet paper. It's how fallen we are. Respiratory virus. Everybody run to Sam's for toilet paper. Love. Act of will. For those of us who are married, we know how this works. You might have got married because you had a fluttering. Right? As Bambi's friend said, you got Twitter pated. The next morning you wake up, and that person next to you has morning breath. The Twitter pating goes away. The fluttering, it's not always there, is it? Right? Every wedding you've ever seen, the man looks across at her and goes, I hope she never changes. She looks at him and goes, I can't wait to change him. <laughs> it's work. He may not even roll up the toilet paper on the right way. He may not use the toothpaste correctly. These are not specifics from my marriage, but I heard other people have these things. Why do you stay married? Because I love her. I make a choice every day. Every day. And she makes a harder choice to love me. I know me. She got the harder part of this. God got the harder part loving me than me loving him. Our brothers and sisters here, act of will, I love you. You preach too long, I know. I love you and I'll work on it to go longer. <laughs> See, we love because he loved us first. That's what John says, right? Whoever claims to love God yet hates his brother or sister is a liar. Whoever does not love their brother or sister whom they have seen cannot love God whom they have not seen. This is First John chapter 4. He has given us this command. Anyone who loves God must also love their brother and sister. Basic Christian stuff right this is not three years into a D group and we go oh we should love each other that's like January of every year stuff right like, I'm brand new to this discipleship thing what should I do love each other love your brothers and sisters and then we'll get the rest of it love God love your brothers and sisters and then we'll work from there God loves us first. J.C. Ryle, who never seems to get it wrong with his quotes, speaking of God, he knew what we were before conversion. Wicked, guilty, and defiled, yet he loved us. He knows what will be after conversion. Weak, erring, and frail, and yet he loves us. I am weak and frail. Please 
love me. You, even when you appear to have it all together, I will love you. And God is glorified in that. Verse 11. Do not be slothful in zeal. What a phrase. Slothful? Mm. More on that in a second. But be fervent in spirit. Serve the Lord. See, one leads into the next. Okay, so we've got, oh, I love each other. Got it. Now what? Well, um, be diligent. Don't fall behind. Do, stay on it. Stay on that love. Stay on that affection. Don't let it get cold. Right? And, and, and when it's difficult, do it anyway. The act of will, again, I know. But what if, I, if I'm not up to it? Then we'll help you. We'll love with you. Don't lag behind in your zeal, in your diligence. Remember last week we talked about the one who leads is to do it in diligence, to be careful, to cover everything, make sure everything's taken care of. Make sure that all of your love and your affection toward one another is taken care of. Make sure that you're doing that. Don't fall behind. Some of us are competitive, aren't we? Don't let me outdo you. If we have to use it, we'll use it. I can love better than you can, right? Anything you can do, I can do better. I can do anything better than you. No. No. Don't fall behind in your zeal, your, your diligence, your love. You're your looking after one another. You know the guy that stands here can't look after everybody all the time, right? Can't. Shepherds can't look at all the sheep at the same time. Especially in a size this big. It's a big flock. I want it to be bigger. So we got to look for each other. You know, sometimes the guy up here, look out, here it comes. Sometimes he might not get you visited until the next day or a few days later. But somebody else will. Your brothers and sisters will look out for you. We are praying for you. Now, I know some people don't like going on the prayer list. I understand this. Well, I just don't want everybody knowing my business. Really? You want no help. I can't imagine. Well, I just, you know those people down there at the church, they talk. Yeah, people everywhere talk. The more they talk to each other, the more they can talk to God on your behalf. We will bear your burdens with you. Whether it's, well, we're struggling in our marriage right now. Sorry to hear that. Can I pray for you? Can we do something for you? No one ever says don't pray for me, by the way. I've had one person in my life say, don't you dare pray for me. I prayed for them without their consent. I will do that. Count on it and deal with it. We prayed. Ainsley doesn't have cancer. We prayed. God heard our prayer. There are others for whom we are praying. God will hear. Why do we pray? Because we love you. And because we want to look after you. Because we want to be diligent. We don't want to fall behind on that. We want to be fervent in spirit. A lot of oomph. A lot of gusto. I'm trying to hit all the generations here. 
as my great grandmother would said, keen. Really after it, right? In our spirit. Imagine being excited about praying for somebody, loving some. Oh, I hope she's here tonight so I can hug on her and tell her I love her because she needs it. I hope he's here, he's struggling, he's obviously carrying a big weight. Yeah, that would be because he's a man. Another talk for another day. I can't wait to pray for him. I can't wait to tell him I'm praying for him, to tell her that I'm praying for her and actually do it. I can't wait to hit the love mark on Facebook and then bow my head, or maybe bow my head and then hit that. We love them on purpose. We don't fall behind. We're not slothful in our diligence. We're fervent in our spirit. Why? Because we are serving the Lord. You may think, well, I, you know, I don't know if I want to help him. I don't know. I don't know. We don't get along. All the more reason to do it. Well, but yeah, he doesn't vote right. You know, he might vote for the other people on the ballot. Hmm. Like people with R's or D's after their name or something. I don't know. He might, what if he doesn't vote for the bond issue? There, I'm sure there's one coming, isn't there always? Imagine those things being the things, well, I don't know. There are far more important things, aren't there? Well, he, he has a different view on doctrine than I do. As long as he believes the basics, right? Father, Son, Holy Spirit, saved by grace through faith. We're good. But his view of the end times is different than mine, probably, since there are like 85 views now. Right? And pretty good, pretty good. I disagree with me sometimes on that depending on the day. There are people that I go, man, I hope they're right. I don't think they are, but man, I hope they are. Yeah, but can I serve them? Yes, you can, because you're not really serving them. You're serving the Lord. How do I, how do I bear up under a terrible boss? So I'm working unto the Lord. I don't work for that man. I have a good boss. All my bosses are pretty good. But the Lord is better, better, and he sees it all. Faithfulness, right? So we're not going to fall behind because we're, we've got this fervor in our spirit to serve the Lord with our gifts, whatever they happen to be. Verse 12, careful, the rubber's about to hit the road again. Rejoice in hope. Good. Be patient in tribulation. What? Be constant in prayer. Those three go together too. There's a reason they're all there together. Rejoicing in hope is pretty easy, right? Yay, good things are coming. I have a birthday coming, and I can still rejoice in that because the number's still small enough. Okay? And I have resolved I will continue to rejoice in that as long as they keep coming. Right? Every time Joanna sees old pictures, I mean, oh, Dad, you used to have so much hair on top of your head. She's lovey. Oh, look how dark your hair was when I was born. And look at how it's not now. She's very cosmetically aware. I never apologize for aging because I know a lot of people who never had the opportunity. God is good. God is good. I will rejoice in the hope that I will wake up tomorrow, either here or there, with you or with him. The great hope is that Jesus is coming. Can you rejoice in that? 
Now, some of us don't rejoice enough because we wish he'd get here faster. If you cannot rejoice in the great hope of our salvation, I don't know what to do with you, but love you until you can. Rejoice in hope. Why? So that you can be patient in tribulation. Oh, we know that one, not the patient part, but we know the tribulation part, don't we? If you're alive on planet Earth today, you know the tribulation part. You know the difficulty part. Words like affliction come up, right? It's a word that the church still uses, but the world doesn't. We don't really use affliction much. Tribulation, affliction, difficulty, a bad year, mm, bad decade, a difficult week. Lord, I don't know what's going on, but I know that you're in it. There's the patience. See, if I rejoice in hope, I'm able to be patient in tribulation. It's hard, but the Lord is faithful. You have never faced difficulty that he will not bring you through. We could go around row by row, pew by pew, and go give testimony, but we'd be here until Christmas on the first three rows. Here's what the Lord has done in my life. Here's what he's done. I, we, we thought it wasn't, it wasn't gonna happen. I lost my job, I lost my dog, I lost my truck, and I started writing country songs. <laughs> Old country songs, not the new ones. But the Lord brought me through. On my 34th birthday, which seems like a really long time ago. My 34th birthday, the doctor called. I'd recently had surgery. I had a little knot here on my finger. The doctor called me in. I was supposed to go in on the day after my birthday, and apparently in his infinite wisdom, he brought me in on my birthday to tell me that we opened it up and it's cancer. Happy birthday. I'm angry. You, you brought me in? You... you it's my birthday's on the chart, Doc. You know what today is. Why would you? What, now, what are we going to do? And he said, Well, we don't want to wait. You could have waited 12 hours. No, go get on it. I want to send J.M.D. Anderson. And we went. They carved up my finger. And they shot dye into me all over my body and looked, some of you know, because you've been there and done that. And we sat in the car, Kara and I did, and cried for an hour in August in a hot car. What are we going to do? What are we going to do? We're going to trust the Lord. turn 49 next week it's gone it's gone patient in tribulation because we rejoiced in the hope that we have the Lord is faithful yes it's difficult Thomas Watson said Affliction may be lasting, but it is not everlasting. James chapter 1, count it all joy, my brothers, when you meet trials of various kinds, for you know that testing of your faith produces steadfastness. That's patience. He will bring you through these things. The difficulty, right? You're a spiritual bodybuilder. You go through the heavy stuff to get buff, swole, cut, spiritually speaking. That's good for you. That's hard to say. It's hard to hear. But any tribulation you've been patient through was good. It's all good. Our last verse here for this morning. 
verse 13. Contribute to the needs of the saints and seek to show hospitality. These are all pretty intentional, aren't they? Contribute to the needs of the saints. You know people that need stuff? There are people in this room that need help. You know that? Well, financially speaking, uh, maybe. You know there are other needs other than financial but th that you can contribute to. If my older daughter doesn't get a sufficient number of hugs per day, she can't sleep. That social distancing stuff about did grace in. Other people in the room here too, huh? Contribute to the needs of the saints. We take care of each other, right? If you have a need and I see it, how dare I not try to meet it? How can, how can I? The Lord has met all of mine. Hasn't he yours? It's so every need according to his riches and glory. We, we were looking about a year ago. I was throwing away old tax returns. Very old for the accountants in the room. They were very old. Um, and we looked at, the, looked at the numbers. I took it to Karen. I said, Did, we didn't get audited? I mean, these numbers, I would audit us because there's no way we bought food with this amount of money that came in. How did we raise our children with this? How does that work? How did, we, how did we eat? How did we pay rent? How did we keep gas in the car to even get to work to earn the pittance that we had? She said, well, God took care of us, obviously. My church helped us out. Now, that, that mean old lady, Katrina, kicked us out of New Orleans with a little baby and a grand am full of her clothes <laughs> and not ours. My church took care of me. They saw to my needs. My church came together. You know, every time we celebrate the Lord's Supper and the guys are at the back and the, the, for the benevolence, I've benefited from that and I'm not ashamed of it because my brothers and sisters took care of me when, they, when I needed it so that I can take care of them when they need it because that's how it works in God's economy. Contribute to the needs of the saints. Those are within the body, right? But then that last one, seek to show hospitality. Oh, brothers and sisters, we're slack on that one. But I know there are people in the room that are good at it. I'm trying not to look at Paige Douglas right now. She is like the queen of hospitality. It's ridiculous. <laughs> Go to their house sometime. Probably tell them first. But even if you don't, hospitality. Someone shows up and we take care of you. Come on in. Right? Are you thirsty? It's August almost. Of course you're thirsty. Are your feet melted to the sidewalk? Mostly. Well, come in and we give, give. Can I get you something to eat? Can I, right? Let's sit down. Let's talk for a minute. Hey, what's going on? Hey, all this, right? Hospitality. We take care of the people inside and hospitality can take care of the people outside. When someone shows up at our church, they show up at our church, do, are we hospitable to them? I saw this Wednesday night. A man came, and he was here, and a bunch of us talked to him. Hey, brother, what's going on? Talk to him. I'm waiting on my girlfriend to get here. Oh, who's not? <laughs> right? And she's coming, and we're not sure, and, you know, they're new to all of this. And uh, I hope they felt welcome. I believe they did. And the kids came. And even if they're disruptive, who cares? You're welcome. 
come in. Because if you're welcome, we can love you. And if you're welcome, you can hear the gospel. There are people sitting in here who just stumbled in one day and were loved into the kingdom. If you've never heard Dustin Owen talk about it, ask him. Not while he's getting his kids to go home because then I'm going to be stuck here, but ask him. They are part of this church because we were hospitable. We weren't over in a corner. We weren't casting sideways glances at them. Now we do now because they're part of us. Seek to show hospitality. It's intentional. We have to do these things on purpose. But it's basic Christian stuff, right? Those of you who have been believers longer than I've walked the earth, it's basic stuff. Love people, treat them like people that were made in the image of God. Not as the help, not as the automatic cashier. What if we talk to the cashier at Walmart? She's having a hard day. Why? How can I say that? I've been there. I've worked at Walmart. I've worked other places. They don't see you. See them. See people. Makes a huge difference. It will open a door for the gospel. Seen it. So let's wind it up here. Bottom line. Two things. If you take nothing else, take this. Love fuels the life and ministry in the body. Our life in the body is about loving each other. The ministry of the body to those inside and outside is fueled by love. Yes, we're commanded to share the gospel. But if you can love somebody, you'll give them the gospel. Because how much do you have to hate somebody not to? Love. Right, as it was a song, we sang it, we sang it a month or so ago. They'll know we are Christians by our love. I never knew that song until I was an adult. Not because we didn't love <laughs> There's a, a second century theologian lived in Carthage in North Africa. His name was Tertullian. He was a lawyer before he came to faith. <laughs> There's a joke in there, but I'm not going to make it. <laughs> then he turned his, his keen uh, mind toward uh, defense of the faith and theology and things like that. And he, and he said that the reason that we've turned the world upside down is that these pagans see how we love each other. They can't stand each other. They see how we love each other. They see how we love each other to the point we die for each other. They don't even want to cross the road for each other. It's not in us. Our sin nature is not loving. And when you're dead in your trespasses and sins, you don't love right or at all. Love's a pretty good apologetic. Love's a pretty good pre-evangelism. Why would you do that? Why would you care? Because Christ has loved me. Let me tell you about him. So love fuels life and ministry in the body. And again, it's not that mamby-pamby, hippie, free love nonsense from the 1960s where it's a feeling, man. Intentional exerting myself for your good that's the kind of love i'm talking about it costs me something number 2 since it's love the goal the target of our life and ministry in the church is never ourselves 
Ministry is not about me. It's not about me. It's not, well, but I, but I just, I, you don't understand. I, 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 I just, I, I, I just need, yeah, you do. Let, we'll take care of it. You don't worry about your needs. We'll take care of your needs and you take care of ours and we'll be good. See, if I'm taking care of you, I don't have to worry about me. You'll take care of me because I'm taking care of you. See, your needs and problems are less of an issue then. You don't have to carry that burden all the time because we're carrying it for you and with you. Life and ministry is about others, not me. Christians changed the culture before because they were not so inwardly focused that they couldn't see lost people. You know why they quit fighting lions in the, in the gladiator games? Because we stopped it. Eventually, there's no more gladiators fighting because they're all Christians. It can happen. I'll leave you with this. Ignatius of Antioch. He's a pastor. Just after the New Testament. First generation of the pastors after the New Testament. He's carried off to Rome to be martyred in the Colosseum. He's going to die before the lions. And he said this. We are not asked merely to call ourselves Christians. We are asked to be Christians through what we do. They will know we are Christians by our love and will remind one another that we are Christians by our love. Now, it may be that you're here this morning, you're like, oh, awful, awful, talk of love. I don't know about all this. I'm going to talk about how they love each other and everything else. Nobody loves me. Maybe. Maybe this whole thing makes no sense to you. Maybe if you've never trusted Christ, this all seems very, very strange and upside down to you. I'd love to talk to you about it. There are others in the room that would love to talk to you about Jesus and the difference he can make in your life. Not just can, but will. He will give you a new life. Now we're going to sing just a few verses. I'm not a long invitation guy. I figure if God's moving, he can do it. We can sing 35 verses of just as I am. But I finished before noon. If God is moving, do business with God. The front altar here will be open. I'll be down front. Happy to talk to you. Happy to pray with you. You don't need me to pray. You can talk to him on your own, but I'm happy to talk to him with you. Let's pray. Our Father, we thank you. We love because you loved us. We love because you love through us. Lord, teach us to be faithful and diligent in our love, in our hospitality, in our contributing to the needs of the saints in our patience and tribulation. Lord, teach us to pray and teach us to rejoice in hope. Starting today, Lord, we ask it in Christ's name and for his sake. Amen.